My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. Southern Utah is known for its sandy nature. The cliffs, the stones, and especially the soil are made up of a very fine-grained sand that once made up prehistoric tidal flats and sand dune deserts. This ancient sand makes for an ideal substrate for small burrowing snakes. During most of the year, one shouldn't expect these snakes to show themselves often. But when the soil is damp from springtime moisture, these subterranean inhabitants, that were once a rare sight, are suddenly able to be found under nearly every rock. Another ground snake. Oh! Here's one. Look at that. There we go. Another one. Oh, I didn't even see it. Ugh, two grounds. I've made an episode about finding ground snakes before, but finding those was only a byproduct of a more elusive snake I had yet to find. The snake I'm referring to is this, the Smith's black-headed snake. And it wasn't until after two years of searching did I flip the right rock after finding countless ground snakes. There's too many rocks. Oh my god. Oh my god. A big tantilla. Look at the size of this one. And here you have the Smith's black-headed snake. This is arguably one of the most elusive snakes in the state of Utah. So it's basically the second weekend of April right now, and this is one of the best times to find snakes down here in southern Utah because it's cool enough that the, the ground doesn't get too hot, but it's warm enough that the rocks warm up in the sun, and these snakes can go under those rocks and warm up, and then will feel energized enough to go and hunt for their food. Obviously, it's weird that this snake has a black head, but why do they have black heads? These guys are thought to have black heads for temperature regulation. Darker colors absorb more heat from being exposed to light. So like, for example, when you wear black pants over wearing white pants on a sunny day, you get quite a bit warmer with black pants. Uh, and as we know, snakes are ectothermic, meaning that they rely on external heat to warm themselves up. This snake's black head allows them to heat themselves up enough to go out and hunt just by poking their head out of the ground. These black-headed snakes are actually part of one of the largest groups of snakes in the world called centipede snakes. And they get the name because one of the most common things that they're seen eating is centipedes. But centipede snakes in general can be found almost all over the U.S., uh, mostly the southern U.S. There are many species throughout Mexico, and then there's even a bunch of species that you find in the tropics down in Central and I think maybe even South America. Yeah, these snakes are, very su are a very successful group of snakes, but at the same time are really elusive. That's potentially why they're so successful. They're pretty hard to find sometimes, and so they can be really good at staying away from predators. And the Smith's black-headed snake alone actually does have quite an extensive range. In Utah, these guys are not just limited to where I am, which is southwestern Utah. Um, they go all the way up into eastern Utah, pretty much all throughout a pretty decent part of the Colorado Plateau. And both in Arizona West and West Texas, these guys actually live alongside a bunch of other black-headed snake species. But up here in, in southwestern Utah, this is the only black-headed snake species you see here, so it's pretty easy to tell what, what species it is. So of course these snakes get the name centipede snakes because that is their primary diet, but they actually go after all sorts of other invertebrates that they can come across, like scorpions, worms, and probably all sorts of insect larvae. They hunt their food not through constriction. These guys are not constrictors. They actually have venom. This is a venomous species. All uh, black-headed snakes are mildly venomous, but I am in no danger right now. And so their venom, though, is not toxic enough to do any harm to me. Uh, they, their venom potentially is lethal, or at least immobilizing, uh, to their prey, which is going to be those insects and other invertebrates. Now, like I said, these are a mildly venomous snake. Just like the night snake, the, the fangs are not hollow like a rattlesnake's or a cobra's. Do these snakes make good pets? No. No, 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 no. Um, it's not like I've seen these guys in captivity anyway, and if you're looking for a snake to keep as a pet, find something that was bred in captivity. So thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Smith's black-headed snake. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. This species can actually be fairly findable if you were looking in an area with plenty of moisture at the right time of year, much like I did here. However, they've also been known to be found in areas far away from moisture, in even harsher climates than the deserts of southern Utah. Therefore, I plan to search for more of these little snakes elsewhere. 
If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe. So, so what do these guys get, get eat while well, I'll get her cat? She's trying to bite me. Uh, seriously? No way. She's trying to bite me. No way. Oh, you ballsy little thing. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever been bitten by a tantilla. Like, there's no... Oh my god, there's a silverfish walking around. <laughs> it just crawled onto my hand. Let's see if this uh, snake eats the silverfish. Oh, I just dropped the snake. <laughs>